did you watch the first one because you missed the clever world? All right, there you go. Thanks for watching another El Belio Reviews, and I'll see you next week. I wouldn't mind concluding this review right there, because after thinking about this film in hindsight, my brain tried rendering images only to begin artifacting shortly afterwards. Men in Black International isn't bad, it's just... It's just a movie that exists. The MIB formula is followed per the usual steps. The story leaps forward with character encountering the men in black in the same way little Timmy encounters Father O'Brien 20 years later for revenge. Some conflict happens that gets the story in motion like a fat guy with a cake tied on the end of a string. There is an all-powerful MacGuffin sought out for the purposes of war like Emperor Gestal tried draining Mewtwo of his powers, which in thought would be cool. Mewtwo is an Esper confirmed, and it is up to our heroes to piece together the mystery and save the world. Tessa Thompson is the main character being obsessed with aliens ever since she learned about their existence as a child, even though no kid in the world wouldn't have immediately screamed at the sight of a discount Pokemon in her bedroom. And also, why didn't the MIB agents who flashed her folks not flash her too? Probably because A, that immediate spout of bad writing five minutes into the movie denies the whole story from happening, and B, the movie would then be outlawed in every country except for Thailand and Iran. Chris Hemsworth plays his character less serious than Thor in Ragnarok and comes off as too cartoonish. Even his introduction to Tessa Thompson's character is played for a laugh, parodying the cool guy looks across the room and smiles cliche with an alien that even rewinds time for a moment for posterity. To which, are we just going to ignore the time-controlling alien MIB agent here? I'm pretty sure this one alien could solve all intergalactic peace in a week if she could learn the time warp dance. No? We're just gonna keep moving on and pretend nothing happened? Alright, I mean, we've already ignored two massive issues and are standing knee-deep in this bitch. Any deeper and I'll get lost only to become a secret character in Spelunky. Anyway, Hemsworth tries to force too much improv with less direction, and it feels off like watching a 3D movie with different prescription lenses. And there isn't a central villain in the traditional sense. Sure, there are two aliens that are more like cosmic entities that can manipulate matter and cause volcanic eruptions with a simple touch, like me giving my arch-enemy's girlfriend the old digit do. And the mole in the MIB, which was easier to figure out than this secret message. And I wouldn't have minded if there was just a little more focus on the everyday job. This was something Dark Phoenix tried to do, which was make the film smaller in scale to be more intimate and character-driven. However, because the Phoenix storyline is one of cosmic scale, the two don't mesh, like giving birth in shark-infested waters. Men in Black, on the other hand, was perfect for this kind of setup, like giving birth in shark-infested waters, except from the shark's perspective. The daily woes, knowing the intergalactic ramifications of screwing up something on the job could lead to any number of horrifying or catastrophic consequences, like the planet being destroyed, or worse yet, an alien holding you down while the other one reaches down into his pants and whips out your holographic Charizard and eats it in front of you. Then they fuck you. It would have been more interesting to see how Tessa's character adjusts to the knowledge of how small we are in the universe, or how tough the job really is for Hemsworth questioning his recent past and dealing with the stress in his own ways like he bets on underground cuckoo fights. Instead, the story only touches on a few ideas with little payoff, feeling more sparse than the universe itself. Overall, Men in Black International was an alright experience. The comedy is a thin icing over an otherwise vanilla cake lacking pizzazz, like you forgot to bake a cake for your son's birthday so you purchased one that says happy 6th birthday birthday daughter, and few ideas are capitalized on, like a Dark Souls boss rearranging your face to your ass because you missed the dodge roll one time.